Alice Walker, the Pulitzer Prize winning author of The Color Purple, Dr. Bernice King, the daughter of Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King, and the CEO of the Martin Luther King Jr. Center of Nonviolent Social Change, Stacey Abrams, a nationally recognized politician, lawyer, and voting rights activist, Rosalind Brewer, the first African-American woman to become CEO of Walgreens Boots Alliance, group president and COO of Starbucks, and CEO of Sam's Club. What do they all have in common? They all attended one of the top liberal arts colleges in the United States, Spelman College. Spelman College has routinely ranked as the number one HBCU and ranked in the top 10 for social mobility and innovation by the U.S. News and World Report. Welcome to Black History Central, where we discuss historical figures, places, and events from the past and the present through the various Black experiences across the world. In today's video, we'll be discussing the history of one of the top liberal arts schools and historically Black colleges and universities, Spelman College. Originally named the Atlanta Baptist Female Seminary, Spelman College was established on April 11, 1881 in the basement of Friendship Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia by two teachers from Oriad Institute of Worcester, Massachusetts, Harriet E. Giles and Sophia B. Packard. Giles and Packard began the school with 11 African-American women and $100 given to them by the First Baptist Church in Medford, Massachusetts and a promise of further support from the Women's American Baptist Home Mission Society. Although their first students were mostly illiterate, they envisioned their school to be a liberal arts institution. The first circular of the college stated that they planned to offer algebra, physiology, essays, Latin, rhetoric, geometry, political economy, mental philosophy, chemistry, botany, constitutions of the United States, astronomy, zoology, geology, moral philosophy, and evidence of Christianity. Over time, they attracted more students. By the time the first term ended, they had enrolled 80 students in the seminary. The Women's American Baptist Home Mission Society made a down payment on a nine-acre site in Atlanta, relatively close to the church they began in, which originally had five buildings left from a Union Civil War encampment to support classroom and resident hall needs. In 1882, Giles and Packer returned to Massachusetts to bid for more money and were introduced to a wealthy Northern Baptist businessman, John D. Rockefeller, at a church conference in Ohio. Rockefeller was impressed by Packard's vision. In April 1884, Rockefeller visited the school. By this time, the seminary had 600 students and 16 faculty members. It was surviving on generous donations by the black community in Atlanta, the efforts of volunteer teachers and gifts of supplies. Many black churches, philanthropists, and black community groups raised and donated money to settle the debt on the property that had been acquired. Rockefeller was so impressed that he settled the debt on the property. Rockefeller's wife, Laura Spellman Rockefeller, and her sister, Lucy Spellman, and their parents, Harvey Buell and Lucy Henry Spellman, were also supportive of, of the school. The Spellmans were longtime activists in the abolitionist movement. In 1884, the name of the school was changed to Spellman Seminary in honor of Laura Spellman and her parents. Rockefeller also donated the funds for what is currently the oldest building on campus, Rockefeller Hall, which was constructed in 1886. In September 1924, Spellman Baptist Seminary officially became Spellman College. Shortly thereafter, entering into an agreement of affiliation with nearby Morehouse College and Atlanta University by chartering the Atlanta University Center in 1929. Atlanta University Center was to provide graduate education for students, whereas Morehouse and Spelman were responsible for undergraduate education. At a time during which black students were often denied access to graduate studies at predominantly white Southern universities, access to Atlanta University Center allowed the undergraduate students at Morehouse and Spelman immediate access to graduate training. The school continued to expand, building and acquiring more property to accommodate the growing student body. In 1947, Spelman joined the list of approved institutions of the Association of American Universities. In 1953, once Florence Reed retired as president, Albert E. Manley became the first black and first male president of the college. Under his presidency and the presidency of his successor, Donald Stewart, Spelman saw significant growth. 
the college established its study abroad program, the Merrill Foreign Travel Study Program. Stewart's administration tripled the college's endowment and oversaw the establishment of the Comprehensive Writing Program, and a cross-curriculum writing program that requires students to submit portfolios of their written work. The Ethel Waddell Githy College of Honor Program and the Women's Research and Resource Center were also established in his tenure. In 1958, the college received accreditation from the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. Spelman has continued to thrive into the modern day. Under the 11th president, Helene Gay, Spelman now has over 2,400 students and an endowment of over $370 million. Spelman now offers bachelor's degrees in over 30 academic majors. Spelman also has the highest graduation rate among HBCUs with a graduation rate of 76%. From its humble beginnings as a small seminary for black women, the school has become a world-class institution that is renowned for its academic excellence and commitment to social justice. Spelman College will continue to be a beacon of hope and inspiration for generations to come as it continues to educate black women from the United States and abroad. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have an idea on what I should cover next, please leave a comment below.